Welcome viewers. Today, we will understand what class A, class B and class C protection of an alternator is. First, we need to understand the basics of a power plant. A power plant is like a family. There are four main members, generator, turbine, boiler and switchyard. These members always work together to provide electricity to the user end. However, there is a problem because the system is interconnected. If anything happens to any of these members, the system will not work and must be isolated to avoid damaging the rest of the system. Suppose a fault occurs in the switchyard. The class C relay gives the trip command to the generator circuit breaker or GCB to isolate the generator from the grid so that the generator can stay away from the fault. If a fault occurs in the generator, the class A relay will act sending a trip command to the GCB and the remote trip solenoid or RTS through which steam passes from the boiler to the turbine. By isolating the generator from the grid and stopping the steam flow to the turbine, the rotor of the generator will slow down. If a fault occurs in the turbine, class B protection will operate. The relay will send a close command to the RTS valve to stop the steam flow to the turbine. Despite this, some kinetic energy will keep the rotor rotating for a while and generate power. This lower power generation will activate the low forward power relay which will send a command to the class A relay or 86A, tripping the GCB to isolate the generator from the grid. These are the basics of class A, B and C protection. Now let's delve deeper to understand how these protections work. When these protections operate, the command goes to the GCB, field breaker, RTS, UTST changeover, and UT incomer. Understanding this power plant layout is necessary to grasp the effects of different protections. First, we know that power is generated in the generator, and to achieve this, we have to rotate the rotor and need flux inside the generator. The rotor is rotated by turbine, and to produce flux, we need an excitation system. When electricity is produced, we have to send it to the grid. However, the generated voltage is not as much to send the power to the remote end user. So we have to step up the voltage by means of a transformer. This transformer is named the generator transformer or GT. Now let's back to the turbine. To rotate the shaft of the turbine, we need steam. And to generate steam, we need a boiler. The boiler also needs water to generate steam coal to heat water and air for combustion. To run this system, electricity is required, which is being fed by the unit transformers or UT. This power came directly from the output of the generator to run coal mills, fans, pumps and other auxiliary systems. Now you may have doubts about what will happen when the generator is not in operation. At that time, power will be fed by the station transformer, which takes power from the grid. When the generator starts generating power, unit bus is charged through the unit transformers and the incomer from the station bus is opened. This changeover is named as UTST changeover. These are the basic elements of a power plant. Each element requires an on-off button for control. For example, the GCB controls the connection between the grid and the generator and the field breaker controls the excitation system. The RTS cuts off the steam flow to the turbine and the master fuel trip or MFT cuts off the fuel flow and extinguishes the flame in the boiler. The bus transfer scheme or BTS is used for UTST changeover to select the power source for auxiliary power, either the station transformer or unit transformer. Now we will understand how class A protection works. This scheme protects the maximum portion of a power plant and is divided into two parts, class A1 and A2. Both concepts are the same, but divided into two groups. Consider the generator bar's insulation is damaged. If the generator continues running, it will burn and result in a huge loss. In this critical situation, class A protection will operate, sending trip commands to all these specific locations. When the trip command goes to the GCB, the generator is disconnected from the grid. Then the trip command goes to the field breaker to isolate the excitation system, but the turbine is still in action. The trip command also goes to the RTS to stop the steam flow and slow down the generator's rotor. 
the unit bus will be charged through the station transformer and the incomer from the unit transformer will be tripped. In both class A1 and A2, the trip command goes to all these locations. The 86A1 relay operates in fault conditions where immediate generator isolation is necessary to avoid damage. Similarly, the transformer should be isolated immediately when GT and UT's REF and differential protection are operated. Critical protections of excitation systems requiring instant tripping and conditions like low forward power and reverse power protection come under class A1 protection. Low forward power occurs during class B tripping, which will be discussed in detail later. Reverse power protection operates when the turbine trips, causing the generator to run as a synchronous motor and take power from the grid, damaging the generator and turbine. Class A2 protection is similar, covering other generator-related protections and a second set of protections. The pressure release valve, Buchholz and standby earth fault of both GT and UTs fall under this scheme. A second set of low forward power and reverse power protection is also provided to increase reliability. Next, we will understand how class B protection works. In this scheme, the trip command goes to RTS to trip the turbine, the HP bypass to open and the reheater protection system. Modern thermal power plants have three turbines, high pressure or HP turbine, intermediate pressure or IP turbine and low pressure or LP turbine, sharing a common shaft with the generator rotor and work together. High pressure superheated steam from the boiler goes to the HP turbine, then to the reheater of the boiler to gather more energy and finally passes through the IP and LP turbines. To stop the turbine, the RTS valve is closed and the HP bypass valve is opened. But there is a problem when the bypass valve is opened, no steam passes through the reheater and a void is created inside it and the temperature starts increasing. But the boiler has sufficient heat to melt the reheater. To avoid this situation, protection of the reheater is needed and water is sprayed inside the reheater. Now let's come to the turbine. When the turbine is tripped, the rotor speed of the generator starts decreasing and cannot send sufficient power to the generator but a reverse power flow may happen as discussed earlier class a protection will operate through low forward power protection let's see how this happens there is logic as you can see 86 b operated and rts valve closed signals ensure the turbine is tripped when the low forward power relay is operated after a time delay these two signals will send a command to 86A relay to trip. Now what is the use of the timer? In class A protection trip command goes to GCB, UT incomer and RTS simultaneously. But there is a problem. When the turbine is tripped, there must be some trapped steam and due to the kinetic energy of the rotor, it will take time to stop rotating and provide mechanical power to the generator. But the generator is in float condition. In this situation, rotor may overspeed. Another problem happens when class A protection operates. Power flow to the grid stopped suddenly. This may create a disturbance in the grid. But this problem will not happen when class B protection will operate. In this tripping, the generator does not stop supplying power suddenly. First, it will decrease generation and then will be isolated from the grid. And by that time, the trapped steam will be finished. In the class B protection scheme, some electrical protections are also provided where instantaneous tripping is not required. Now let's see when this situation happens. See the protections of the turbine go with 86B and some protections of excitation system like excitation transformer over temperature. Manual channel fail will not cause any instantaneous damage to the system along with these UT's HV side over current protection and one contact of reverse power relay is also provided. Finally, we will understand how class C protection works. In this scheme, all the grid related faults are targeted like generator under and over frequency, distance protection, generator negative phase sequence, generator thermal overload and bus bar protection. The trip command goes to GCB only. 
Let us take an example. Consider generator under frequency protection is operated. This will energize the 86C relay and will issue a trip command to GCB. And generator will be disconnected from the grid. But the generator is not stopped to generate power. This power will go to the UTs for station requirements. This condition is called generator islanding, like an island in the sea. In this situation, it is not economical to run the generator for unit loads, which is about 5 to 10% of the generation capacity. Also, generator overspeeding may happen in this condition. So the turbine is also tripped. Now that you've understood the reason behind this classification. I hope you've understood the different protection schemes for generators. If you have any queries or suggestions, feel free to comment below. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, don't forget to subscribe as it motivates us to create more informative videos like this. Let's meet in the next video. Till then, stay charged, stay electrified.